Once the safety checks have been performed, ask the patient to lie supine on the bed with their head in the head coil. Give the patient an emergency alarm, making sure they know how to use it, and provide ear protection in accordance with the manufacturer's guidelines. Attach the head coil. Move the patient carefully into the scanner and centre to the glabella. Then move the patient fully into the scanner, making sure they're calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Once at the workstation, select the patient in the browser or type in the details manually. Make sure that the details are entered correctly, including the patient weight, so that the specific absorption rate, or SAR, can be calculated accurately. Register the patient as lying head first and supine. Select the correct protocol according to your hospital and radiologist guidelines. Begin with the localizer sequence in three planes. In this protocol, the first sequence is a T2 axial brain. On the sagittal localizer, plan your axial slices running parallel to a line joining the inferior border of the genu and the splenium of the corpus callosum. Make sure the whole brain is covered from the vertex superiorly to the foramen magnum inferiorly. On the coronal localizer, the central slice should pass perpendicular to the midline of the brain. Check the field of view in the axial plane and apply. The next sequences are high resolution, small field of view images of the pituitary gland. Now let's plan the T1 sagittal fat sat of the pituitary gland using the acquired axial image. Angle the positioning block parallel to the midline of the brain. Scroll through and identify the pituitary gland. Your slices must be sufficient to cover the pituitary gland side to side. Make sure of this by including the right and left carotid arteries on either side. Check that the block is centered on the pituitary gland on both the axial plane and the sagittal plane. In the coronal view, the block should be angled along the midline of the brain. Now apply. Plan the T1 coronal fat sat on the acquired sagittal sequence. Angle perpendicular to the cella tersica, ensuring the whole gland is covered. Centre on the gland in the axial view, aligning the slices perpendicular to the midline of the brain. Centre the field of view in the coronal localizer and apply. The T2 coronal planning can be copied from the sequence above. If the radiologist has requested a gadolinium injection, 
you can now plan your post-contrast scans. In this protocol, we have T1 sagittal and T1 coronal fat-saturated post-contrast sequences. Both sequences can be copied from the corresponding ones above. Before administering contrast, remember to check the patient's kidney function in accordance with hospital and national guidelines and only proceed if it's safe to do so. Once the pre-contrast images have been acquired, enter the contrast volume and the name of the contrast medium. Bring the patient out, reminding them to lie still. Inject the contrast according to the manufacturer's guidelines. Check that the contrast is not tissued or extravasated and that the patient is feeling well before returning to the control room. Now continue with post-contrast imaging. You should have reviewed your images after each scan was acquired. Let's review them now. On all sequences, we're checking the image quality and that the pituitary gland is fully visualized. This is a T2 axial brain, where fat and fluid appear bright. Here you can see bright fluid from CSF in the ventricles, around the sulci, and in the vitreous humor of the eye. Here's the pituitary gland. This is the T1 sagittal fat saturated sequence. This is the pituitary gland and the corresponding pituitary stalk. Ensure sufficient coverage from side to side. Notice the dark fluid in the lateral ventricle, which is characteristic of a T1 image, where fluid is dark. This is a T1 coronal fat saturated image. Again, here's the pituitary gland with the internal carotid arteries on either side. Check that the gland is covered anteriorly and posteriorly. This is a T2 coronal high resolution image. The pituitary gland appears light gray and the CSF appears bright in the T2 images. Let's move on to the post-contrast images. On the T1 sagittal fat-saturated post-contrast scan, the pituitary is seen to have enhanced. The same is true on the coronal image. Gadolinium is often used to enhance the diagnostic quality of the scans, identifying abnormalities such as micro and macro pituitary adenomas. <laughs>